Hello everyone, my name is Clark Stevens and I'm a business intelligence analyst and also a member of the leadership team for the Seattle Tableau user group. Last year I did a breakout session um, demo on how to build a customer churn model in Tableau using Salesforce data and data blending. It was re well received so I wanted to record the session so everyone has the benefit of it. First, a uh, quick intro on what customer churn is. Um, it's basically a measure of how many customers you've lost in a given period relative to how many customers you had at the beginning of the period. So we're going to do a monthly customer churn model. So it's simply lost customers over customers at the beginning of the period. Pretty simple, um, but also very powerful. So this is what it's going to look like at the end. Nothing crazy or visual. It's just a cross tab. You could always add visualizations on top of it later. But what we have is for the last 12 months, this was sessions recorded in February. We've got the customers at the beginning of the month, new customers in the month, lost customers, and then your monthly churn. So I'm going to show you the data that we're going to be using for it. First of all, here is the Salesforce extract. And this is mocked up data. Um, basically, we have account name. And these are just you know accounts from the S&P 500 account name, we have the status, whether it's expired or a customer. We have the date they became a customer and the date that they churned. And if they never left us, then it's null. We also have a date dimension, the tablet data extract that I took, and it's just a standard, standard date dimension that has dates and then information about those dates. Day of the week, month, quarter, whether it's a weekend or not, all that stuff. And that date dim is going to come in handy because we need to relate two different dates on the same axis. I'll show you how we go about doing that. But first, let's connect to our data, starting from complete scratch. Uh, here's our Excel file. And now we'll connect to that date dimension. All right. Some cleanup we're going to do first. We're going to duplicate the customer data set because we need one for new customers and one for lost customers, even though they both contain all of the data. We're going to use them for different purposes. Now let's set up our relationship so we can blend. So our primary data source is going to be the date dimension. Lost customers, as you can imagine, we're going to blend on expired date. New customers, it's going to be on the contract agreement sign. Now let's take date and put it on the axis. Make it discrete because we're going to be building a cross tab here. All right, here's our date. As you can see, it goes from 2010 all the way to 2020. And I could have cleaned this up before bringing it in, but I think this is kind of good information. So we are going to filter out the dates that we don't care about. We're going to have to do this in separate, two separate fields, and I'll show you why, two separate filters. First, we're going to hide future dates. And it's simply going to be, we don't want to see anything where the month is greater than the month now. So this is going to evaluate to true when the month in the date dim is less than the current month. So we can f put this on the filter and say true. Now remember, it did go to 2020. Now it stops at February 2016, which is the month the session was recorded in. So we've gotten rid of all those future dates. Now we have to get rid of the past dates. Now we could have usually done this all in one filter fairly easily. But I'll show you why that's not the case here. And I could have had this all done before I started recording, but I really wanted to just do this from complete scratch so you could see everything. So pardon my slow typing. All right. Now, I'm just going to put the number of records from the BI date dim on here, and we'll make it a table calculation of uh, running total. So it's just summing up the number of records 
up till the month that you're looking at. So let's look at March 2015. There's 1,916 records up until that point. Let's put that hide pass dates field on filters. And what happens when I do that is, okay, we're only seeing data from the last 12 months, which is what we want, but there was 1,900 records, and now it's only showing 31. That's because when you put, um, put the filter on actual filters, all of that previous data is no longer available to the table calculation because it's being filtered out of the viz. So what we can do instead is put it on columns, and it evaluates to true for the last year, rolling 12 months, and it false for everything else. So we can actually hide the false, not exclude, because that'll put it in filters, but hide it, and then we still have that 1916 value for March. So all of the data in the table calc is still available for the table calculation. For now, we actually want that past data, and we can go back to churn. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get that beginning number of customers. Um, there's a couple steps we have to do first, though. First, let's let's find out how many new customers we get in a month. It's new customers, and it's going to be sum of the number of records. I did a ZN just so if there are no records in a given month, it'll show zero instead of blank. And since we are going to blend on contract agreement sign date, it uses a left join. So every customer has a sign date, or else they wouldn't be a customer. But for lost customers, we're only going to get records in a month where there were lost customers. So it's in a left join that allows this to work, Why we can just use number of records there. Um, let's go to lost customers and make it same formula and I'm just gonna put measure names here new customers and lost customers and now we can get rid of this number of records field just gonna format this because it drives me nuts when there's decimals that we don't need all right, so now we've got data. We start getting customers in October, got two new ones, two more in December, and so forth, and we don't lose, we start losing customers in May 2014. But we need beginning number of customers. So let's just do a running total. Total new customers is just running some new customers. Same thing with total lost customers. Total new on there. And let's put total lost on as well. Just see what the data looks like. So we gained two new customers in October, and we see them. No customers in November. We gained one more in December, so now we've got three. Another one in January for a total of four. That's all fine and dandy. Looks like lost customers are working as well. The problem is we need total new customers at the beginning of the month. This is showing at the end of the month because it's putting customers that we gained during the month here. So in October... The beginning value that we want is zero because we had no customers before that, but it's showing two. So we need to make some changes to the total new customers field so that we're seeing what happened at the beginning of the month, not what it was at the end of. So what we're going to do is back out new customers and we're going to add back in lost customers because if we lose customers during a month, they were still a customer at the beginning of the month. All right. So it's just kind of netting out everything. Go to lost customers, you actually don't need to change anything here. So we can define customers at the beginning of the month as total new customers up to that point minus total lost customers up to that point. Let's see if this works. We'll look at May. Total new customers in May is 11. 
total loss customers is two. So our beginning count should be nine. Let's go back to the actual data and see if that's true. I'm going to filter out everything that happened after May. Actually, I'll throw June in there, 2015. Now, we gained two customers in October, like we saw, one in December, one in January. So if we go to the beginning, what's the value of number of customers we had at the beginning of the month for May? It's nine. Remember, we don't want to count these customers that we got in May. Um, and we hadn't lost any customers prior to that. So the value that we're looking for for the beginning of the month May customers is nine. So we've got 11 total new customers minus two total lost customers, nine. So that, that's what we want. So let's create the field beginning customer count. Let's make sure it's working when we're losing customers as well. So let's put new back on and lost on there as well. Okay, so we know nine is the right number for May. We gained three new customers in May, so that's 12, but we lost two, so that's 10 for June. Go back to our data. We start with nine customers, and then during the month of May, we gained three. Great, so we're up to 12. But if we look, we lost two customers in May, here and here. So that means our beginning balance in June should be 12 minus 2 is 10. And it is. So our beginning customer um, is working. So now all we need to do is create churn, which is simply lost customers over beginning customer count. Put that on the viz. We'll go ahead and format it as a percent. All right, and it's going to be 0. Oops. One thing, I don't like these blanks on cross tabs. Let's put the Z in around it, now we get zeros. We're not going to have any values until we start seeing churn, which is in May. So value at the beginning was nine, at the end was, or and we lost two, and our churn is 22%. So two customers lost over nine at the beginning of the month, 22%, we are rocking and rolling. So now just a little cleanup. We can hide the months we don't care about, and this will update dynamically as months roll over. We can get rid of the header and the label, and here we are. You know, you can beautify this or you know visual visualize it um, as you wish, but this is the model. So thank you very much, and hope to see you at a Seattle Tableau user group meeting soon.